to link on to, to that topic, uh, but slightly differently, um, we also understand that there's huge risk with, with IT governance mm. as opposed to, to IP uh, management, IT governance and, and how one would handle information within a company. And, and, and there are perhaps some examples to cite there as to where we've had instances of breaches. Um, is that something that's addressed in the code? And, and if so, where, where would one uh, find that? Well, uh, again, in the IT governance uh, sections of the codes, uh, what's very interesting and I think very uh, commendable in the codes is that it now has a focus on cybersecurity and places an oversight role on uh, the governing body of an organization to oversee its cybersecurity practices to ensure that there are policies and, and strategic uh, approaches taken to this and to, to enforce this uh, in their organization. So I think that's definitely something that is uh, an innovative step in the King Codes and is something that will uh, push forward uh, these kind of considerations right up uh, onto the, the board, uh, up to board level. Um, one question about that is that is IT, uh, is cybersecurity the only thing that we, we need to be concerned about in respect of IT risks in a business? Uh, again, I, I cite that uh, a lot of businesses uh, also have the risks of change control and, and not being able to keep up with uh, the uh, changes that take place in our environment and technological environment and whether or not this is something that needs to be dealt with um, at board level. I mean, a good example of this would be in the U.S., a couple of businesses, uh, RIM, for example, uh, responsible for BlackBerry, certain decisions taken at board level might have taken better account of the changing environment and, and projections in respect of where the, the IT policies and IT systems and IT assets were going. And if that was something that was uh, perhaps an uh, IT governance committee uh, had to look at this and had to opine on this and deal with this on a, on a more regular basis, it would not be something that's pushed down to, to management. So um, uh, again, I think it's very innovative in what the, the King Codes try to do in respect of information technology. I think it's exactly the right approach we, we need to be taking, but uh, this is something that has to deal, deal with the next 10 years of innovation and, and we don't know what, what waits ahead, so, so does it address it uh, in a robust fashion and does it give directors the tools that they need to deal with this or does it just oblige them to go and find the tools? Perhaps, Nancy, if you want to comment on that, uh, where would one deal with IT risk just in the, in the organizational and the, uh, the governance structures that are, um, that are contained within King? Where would IT risk fit in there and how would that be dealt with? We actually had huge discussions at, at the King Committee um, uh, on this because um, e even the inclusion of cyber security, so w we were debating, on the one hand we want to follow this high level principled approach and on the other hand, there are the specific pertinent issues of the day, which if you ignore them, they sort of, you know, are glare, glaring in their omission. But on the other hand, if you include the specifics, uh, you, you also run the danger of dating um, your code. And we, we didn't want to do it because we want King 4 to have longer longevity than King 3 had. So um, in the end, as you know, we decided to deal with, with cyber security. As far as, as, as the rest of um, <coughs> IT risk is concerned, our belief is that it should be dealt with under risk generally. You know, all risks of the business should be dealt with um, in an integrated fashion. And we were very careful and wary not to single out too many of these because where, where do you draw the line? So, so cyber security is kind of an exception to this general approach that we took. Rightly or wrongly. Right. Right. And I think the point that you make there that I think is also pervasive through the report is this issue of integration. It, it really seems to me that the idea here is that reporting um, functions, principal issues are to be looked at holistically. And it's not, not a situation where the report tries to create a tick box situation. And of course, us as lawyers and I guess compliance officers are often looking for that kind of tick box so that you can say, well, I've ticked all the boxes and I'm fine. But we are dealing with a slightly different type of document here. We're dealing with something that is of a more principled nature. Uh, Andre, if I can maybe come back.